Welcome back to church, folks. We are so glad you are here with us this morning as we are gathering on this wonderful May morning to celebrate our, our Lord and Savior. And it is a beautiful morning out there. We've had a few cold days this past week, but I think it's starting to warm up. Summer is in sight, which is great news. Uh, I, for one, love uh, wonderfully sunny days, and you can go out and walk and get some exercise. So it's great to see that uh, the sun is coming out, and hopefully it continues to stay that way. We hope you can get out and enjoy the beautiful creation that God has given to us as well at some point. Well, folks, as we get started this morning, I'd like to draw your attention to our bulletin. Again, you can find our bulletin on our website at highfieldbaptist.org, and you can uh, check out all the announcements for yourselves there. But I'm going to go over and highlight a few things for you at this time right now, so let's check them out together. First of all, you can check out our online meetings that we have. These are going really well, and these are a great chance to connect and grow and learn, even when we're apart from each other for now. And these are our small groups that are happening. On Mondays at 1.30 p.m., we have a ladies' Bible study called Psalms for a Woman's Life. It's led by Beth Rockwell, and you can email her for more information. And again, all the contact information is in your bulletin. So you really want to check it out. Tuesdays at 7 p.m., we have a small group with Mark Cameron. You can see his number there. Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m., it's our weekly prayer group. A good chance for anyone and everyone to come together and pray for each other, pray for things that are going on in our church, in our community, in our country, and of course, worldwide. And so uh, make sure to come in and check that out Wednesdays at 1.30 p.m. Thursdays at 7 p.m. is our men's coffee group. Uh, now, obviously, we're not together to have a shared coffee, so you can uh, brew your own pot of coffee and, uh, and bring it there with you on, vir on virtual stream. So uh, most of these small groups are done through Zoom, and it's a, very, it's a free app and one you can download pretty easily. Finally, Thursdays at 8 p.m., we have a young adults group, and that's led by myself, and that's again at, at 8 p.m. Uh, in fact, actually, we've had just recently changed that time. This next meeting is going to be at 7.30, so actually a small correction there. Thursday, this coming Thursday at 7.30 p.m., we are going a little bit earlier to give people a chance to join, in case maybe 8 p.m. is a little late. So this Thursday at 7.30 p.m., we're going to try it uh, for our young adults. And we also have a new group that now meets. Our youth are now meeting, grades 6 to 12, are meeting Wednesdays at 2 p.m. That's Wednesdays at 2 p.m., right around the same time as the prayer group. Uh, we are joining online through Zoom. We had a great group last week. We did some games, watched a video together, and uh, heard from the Word of God. And so come and join us if you're in grades 6 to 12. We invite you to join us through Zoom. Contact me for more info on that one. Some other announcements. Uh, our HBC Kids Online page is still up. We are getting ready to finish our Heroes of the Faith unit, and that is going to finish and conclude this coming week. So you can come and check out the final lesson in that unit this week. Uh, Tuesday by noon, it will be uploaded. And that is, of course, on our website. Our May service project continues, and it's so important that we can reach out and help other, uh, other organizations in our community, especially at this time when they really desperately need the help. And so Pregnancy Wellness Center is looking for baby supplies. And uh, we recognize that sometimes these can be expensive, but people really need these things. And so if you can collect some baby wipes, baby lotion, and soap, you can drop them off right inside our main doors. There's a little drop-off spot there, and you can leave the items there, and we will take them to our Pregnancy Wellness Center, whatever is collected at the end of May. If you have any prayer requests, you can check it out on our webpage. Uh, there's a, prayer, a new prayer section there, highfieldbaptist.org slash prayers, and you can fill out uh, our, our cards and, uh, and fill out some information about yourself. Even if this is your first time visiting, we'd love to hear from you, and, uh, and feel free to check that out. That's again, highfieldbaptist.org slash prayers. And finally, I want to uh, say that, of course, this is Monday, May 18th is Victoria Day, so please be advised the church office will be closed. We're just giving you a heads up on that right now. The church office will be closed on Monday because of it is Victoria Day. And so enjoy, enjoy that, this long weekend. Folks, as we come before the Lord this morning, we also want to remember how important it is to be able to uh, give of ourselves and, of course, give of our tithes as well in order to uh, keep things operating here. And, uh, and, of course, we want to thank you once again for all that you've done in terms of tithing. And, uh, again, just to remind you of the four ways you can give. You can give through push pay. You can give online through our website. 
You can place it in our mailbox just outside our church, uh, right at our door. Uh, and you can also mail it, if it's not cash, uh, to our address, and uh, you can also drop it off at our church office. So there's all kinds of ways you can give, and once again, we thank you for giving at this, uh, at this time. And now I'd like to read to you a passage from the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verses 4 to 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet is without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let's pray. Lord, this morning we approach that throne. Lord, there may be those among us today who are seeking your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. And Lord, you so willingly give it and pour it out to us. Lord, we thank you. And today we worship and celebrate who you are. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us. Thank you for lifting us up when we so desperately need it. And God, now we commit all that happens in this service to you. Lord, we thank you, we worship you, we praise your name. And it is in that holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we ask for all these things. Amen. Good morning, church. We're going to start with our first worship song, King of Kings. And it might be a bit unfamiliar to some of you, but I hope you'll worship with us.
Please let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can be here today to worship you. We thank you for the hope, peace, faith, and salvation that we have through you. Lord, we ask you to please fill us with the knowledge and will through the wisdom and understanding provided by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you guide us in our decisions, both individually and as a church. Lord, that we may hold to the commandments that you have given us. Lord, we confess to you our sins, our shortcomings, and our proneness to forget you and to put other things first. Forgive us, Lord, when we walk away from the path that you've set before us. Forgive us, Lord, when we allow fear and doubt to guide our decisions and reactions. Please give us the strength, Lord, and courage to follow you in our lives, wherever that may lead. Lord, please be with those who cannot be with us today for healing for those who are sick. Lord, we pray for our leaders during this challenging time, for our public health officials, our politicians, and healthcare professionals. Please keep them healthy and give them strength during these long hours. Lord, also please give them wisdom uh, as they make decisions on how to safely ease restrictions, Lord. Lord, we also pray for our communities, both local, national, and around the world. Specifically, Lord, we pray for resiliency and wisdom and faith during this time. Lord, please be with our pastors and our church staff. We pray for continued guidance from you in all that they do. Please be with Pastor Gary as he brings the message today. Please open our hearts to this message and show us, Lord, how we can be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen.
I've been waiting to tell you something. It started with the fisherman. He taught them a new way of life. He turned everything upside down to make it right side up. Forgive seven times? Try 70 times seven, he said. Just be nice? No. Give it all over, whatever is asked of you. Reach over the tracks. Yeah, go to that part of town. <laughs> Cling to the eternal and shake off the chains of this earth. Sin messed everything up, the whole world, but he made it right. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy and honored is your name. Your kingdom, it's come. I'm pledging my life to bring it closer and closer, to show the power of your divine love, to declare deliverance from death and sin. To all people, to each race in every language. Making disciples of all nations, I'll own my responsibility. Go all in and make it real in my corner of the world. The authority Jesus has already been given. The kingdom that will come on earth as it is in heaven. An everlasting dominion that will never pass. Because he beat death. Coming as the king of the Jews and finishing it all as the king of the world. His throne and authority are sovereign. Oh, you heard right. Forgiveness without boundaries. Hope in all circumstances and a peace that passes understanding. Because death is conquered, eternal life is established. That's why we keep going. Why I keep telling. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The root. The offspring. The bright morning star. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From street to street. Nation to nation. He is the King. Power and glory belong to Him. His kingdom will have no end. There's room for you and room for me. Room for everyone who calls on the name of the King. And his name is Jesus, the name above all names. The first and last. The one and only. And he loves you. And he loves you. He loves you. And he loves you. And that is what I've been wanting to tell you. Well, good morning, and I'm delighted that you've decided to join us this morning via live stream. And you might see an extra smile on my face this morning, and it's because I'm seeing two rows of people. And oh no, they're not here with us physically, but a couple in our church saw the need to, to do this, and I won't name them by name, but their names rhyme with Terrence and Amy. And they had people send in pictures, and they printed them and they pasted them to the chairs, and I am just so delighted to see faces, and I long for the day when we can be together. Thank you guys for doing that. It's very meaningful this morning. I also want to thank the Fords for uh, once again coming in and, and pre-taping music for us so that we could worship uh, well together this morning, uh, for Pastor Cody and for Tim uh, leading us today, and of course for Tommy and Ray uh, in our sound upstairs. Thankful for everybody who who contributes to us doing live worship each and every Sunday. Well, a few weeks ago, we started our series on the essentials of the church. What does it mean to be the church? What makes us a church? And we're far more than a building on the corner of Highfield and St. George with a street address. And we discovered in the first week that we are the people of God, we are the family of God. We are the body of Christ. And that's who we are as a church. That is our identity as a church. And our theme this morning is the faithfulness of God. You know, there's not a doubt in my mind that God is faithful in what he's called us to do. He will be faithful to us no matter how long we're in this or wherever we might find ourselves. God is going to be faithful to us. And the only question that we might have this morning is, are we going to be as faithful to him? In other words, are we going to stay on course? Or has this pandemic kind of caused the church to stumble or stagger in the mission that he's called us to and that he's given to us? It is an unprecedented time to be the church. And we can certainly look at it from the negative, determining we can't do this or we can't do that. 
But I passionately believe this morning that God has put before us so many opportunities that will teach us and show others what Jesus Christ, the church of Christ, is all about. He will unleash many opportunities through us. Things that we can do to show the love of Jesus. So the second essential that I I want to share from our series this morning is the mission of the church. And this is probably the one that is nearest to my heart. Because without defining and carrying out the mission, we are simply another social organization. Now, this is not the first time I've talked about the mission. We talk about our mission because I truly believe it is why we exist. It is why we are here. Pandemics and things around us certainly do affect our mission, not necessarily what the mission is, but in how we carry out the mission. So I want to challenge us as a church. Are we still being faithful in these days to what he has called us to do? And we're going to look at God's word this morning, and we're going to look at a couple of familiar places, first in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, and then we're going to go to Acts 1, verses 4 to 8. As we start this morning, can I just once again say how thankful that I am for the technology that we have that makes it possible for us to be together and for those who look after it and run it week by week? You see, what tends to happen when we go through a crisis is we kind of pull back. We sometimes focus on how we can't operate rather than how God will provide a way so that we can. And we kind of lose our direction sometimes. A couple of weeks ago we talked about our identity. And who we are as the church. Now our identity hasn't changed just because the world around us has. So the second essential, our mission, hasn't changed either. It's obvious in history. And and history for us is a great teacher. There have been seasons where the church has lost its focus on the mission. Even when we look back in the Old Testament, when they came out of exile, they came back to the city and there was a sense of a different mission. Whereas they were intended to be a blessing to the nations, it no longer was about the nations. It became very much about themselves, and that's what Jesus himself fought during his earthly ministry. I can tell you that when we're going through pain and suffering, we tend, to, we tend to focus on ourselves and not the mission. Focusing not on what is out there, but what's going on inside of us, it's a natural tendency to happen. I really think the early church is one of the greatest examples that we have. Think about their pain and their suffering and the persecution for the first couple of hundred years in their existence. And yet they grew. The obstacles, what they were going through, did not stop them. In other words, it's been said that the blood of the martyrs became the seed of the early church. So we can't let what's happening around us affect us as far as the mission. Sometimes it's a different thing. Sometimes it's political expediency. In other words, it's getting involved in the thought we we need the approval of our officials to carry out our mission. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. We need to carry out the rules and the directions, all those things that they've laid out to keep us safe. But that should not distract us from the mission. Let me tell you what the early church did. They didn't accommodate Rome in what they wanted them to do. And beyond that, they never had the favor of Rome. They never had the blessing of Rome. But do you know what? It did not stop them. Because their goal was not to win the favor of Rome, it was to transform the people of Rome. And they did it with the gospel, and they literally changed their world all around them. One of the things that makes me nervous about our ability to carry out the mission is the influence of distractions and disunity. Do you know that in the early church there were many distractions and there was a fair bit of disunity? And we'll talk about unity in the church a few weeks from now. But it was because they began to debate on things. Do you know that more Christians in the first couple of hundred years of the church were killed by other Christians debating over the doctrine of the Trinity than the amount of Christians 
Rome ever killed. It's shocking, but true. The church turned inward and began fighting amongst themselves, and they lost sight of the mission. So what about these days? For sure we have a lot of distractions. Just turn on the TV and listen to whatever news broadcast you want to or follow things on social media. There's so much out there that is about disunity and it's about distraction. We cannot let distraction keep us from the central purpose, the mission that the church has been called to by Jesus himself. And yet maybe there's something greater of a distraction to the mission. Perhaps it's the most dangerous and it's prosperity. It could be one of the biggest threats to the mission. And it's simply for this reason prosperity breeds consumers of people who say, what about me? Aren't you going to serve me? I'm used to prosperity. And that's how we want to be treated in the church sometimes. The focus of the mission becomes inward-based instead of outward-based. And that type of thinking will kill the mission. And I pray this morning that none of us will ever succumb to the theology that God owes us something. That he owes us riches and that he owes us blessings. He owes us nothing and we owe him everything. And that's why we have to be about the mission. So let's look and let's see what Jesus says this morning. We're going to look at the two texts that I mentioned. We'll start in Matthew where Jesus was in Galilee. And this is where he gives us the mission. And then to Acts, where he is in Jerusalem, and said, go and be my witnesses. So Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, it says this. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This passage is what we refer to as the Great Commission. In other words, it's the mission of the church. Then we go over to Acts 1, verses 4 to 8. And Jesus says this, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at that time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. Now let me just pause there for a moment, because this world crisis has caused a lot of speculation. It's created dozens of conspiracy theories. It's created all kinds of thoughts trying to link theological ideas, all kinds of prophetic possibilities, and yet there are a lot of things we do not understand. Things in this season that don't make any sense to us at all. Talks about numbers and the year we're in, which might be fascinating to us, but that's not the point. Here's the point. The disciples tried to change the question to, is this the time the kingdom is coming? Is this a part of what's going to be happening at the end? But take notice. Watch what Jesus says right here. He says, no, no, don't worry about that. I want you to do instead of that, the mission. So the question is not, how does all of what's happening today fit into prophecy? The question is this, we have a mission, and are we fulfilling it? Are we doing it? Now, if things are revealed to us along the way, and we figure it out, that's great. But we cannot sacrifice the mission of the church to be caught up in all the debates of what may or may not be happening. To be caught up in all the arguments and the discussions and all these things. Things that may never be known until that dare we are with him. So look what Jesus says next. He says in verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Don't worry about those things. 
In other words, don't worry about the kingdom things. My Father who is in heaven, he's taking care of that. Nothing for you to worry about. And as for you, here's what you need to be doing. You're going to be a witness. So when we take these two and you put them together, it's very clear. The last words of Jesus to his people, and who are his people? It's us, are about the mission. You will be my witnesses. It's the very last thing he said, and and because in the next moment he ascends to the Father, he doesn't say anything else. So consider the importance of these last words. So let's break it down into two things. First, of course, is the mission. And then the second thing is our help to accomplish the mission. So what is our mission? The simplest way to say it is we are to make disciples. When Jesus says in Matthew, go, or as we know it means as you go, or on your journey of life, in your, in your everyday life, whatever you're doing, he says, go into every part of the world and make disciples and baptize them. The action in Matthew 28, 19 is make disciples. That's our job as we go. And then he says to all nations, so let's talk about the scope of the mission. It's everywhere. It's wherever we are. It's wherever we go. And so there's no big debate. Is it Jerusalem or Judea or Samaria or the ends of the earth? The answer is yes, all of the above. So let's establish this. Our mission never changes, no matter where we are on the planet earth. We have the same mission, and that mission is to make disciples. So let's sum up how that happens. How are we supposed to do that? And the first thing that we see is lead people to Jesus. In Acts, he said, you're going to be my witnesses. And that's so critical to catch because he didn't say you're going to be a witness to the church, a witness of some kind of movement or anything else. He said, you are my witnesses. Pretty clear. So we lead people to Jesus, whatever that takes and whatever that means. And by that I mean we talk to people about Jesus. We share what Jesus has done for us. Witness is a great word, by the way, it's used 29 times in the book of Acts. Tell the truth. That's what a witness does. If you go to court as a witness, you tell the truth of what you know. Witness is actually connected to the word murder. It really means I'm living and dying for this. It's my life. Jesus is my life. I need to tell people and talk about it. When we talk to someone or pray with someone, we point them to Jesus. When we take food to someone or help someone out in this season that we're in, we do it in the name of Jesus Christ. We point them to Jesus. So whatever we do, we lead them to Jesus because he said, you are my witnesses. The second thing is we lead people to confess Jesus. We baptize them. What exactly does that mean? Well, Jesus tells tells them in Matthew, our text, go to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So baptism, baptizing people, is actually part of the mission he's called us to. But do you know why? It is the outward confession of Jesus of who he is, of the difference he makes. That's why it's so important. That's why we as a church encourage people to be baptized, to do that. To become part of our mission is to lead people to confess who Jesus is and not be ashamed. Baptism is the way we do it for the world to know and to see. And then we lead people to be like Jesus. We need to teach people. In verse 20 it says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. What does that mean? It simply means we are to teach people. We teach them how to be followers of Jesus, how to be like Christ. And this is the part that sometimes gets left out because we get all anxious and we get excited about the moment of conversion and the celebration of baptism And what we leave out sometimes is that they need to grow up in Christ. 
It's like having a newborn baby, and once they come into the world, you, you don't just leave them at the hospital or bring them home and say, you're good, you're on your own. No. Babies need a lot of attention, and they need help. And that's a great analogy to understand what we need to be doing as a church. A new Christian is like a newborn baby in Christ, and so we work to teach them that's part of the mission, and that happens best in community. So what we do is we talk to them through this book. And we're talking about it and we're showing them things from the book. And I think that's why it's so important that we get connected. This whole process of sanctification is so that we will become more and more and more like Jesus. And I believe that's a big part of the call of the church in discipling. To help people grow up in Jesus. And not just to grow one another up, but to lead them to help someone else grow up in Jesus. So it begins with us. We lead people to Christ, lead them in that confession, and then we lead them to be more like Jesus. Then here's the goal. It's a follower who helps others to follow, who in turn helps others to follow, who also helps others. Do you see the picture? That's the goal. In other words, it's followers of Jesus who are reproducing followers of Jesus. So can I just give you the mission of the church? It's really simple. It's a simple mission. It doesn't need to be complicated. Make disciples. It is to follow Jesus and to lead others to do the same. There's no caveat. There's no qualifying statement that says when life is good and all is well. No. Even in our situation, our mission does not change. It is to follow Jesus and lead others to do the same. My mission this morning in standing before you under the Lord is to point you to Jesus Christ. Everything we do as a church needs to be qualified with how does it lead people to Jesus. And if we can't answer that question in the affirmative, then we probably need to stop doing it. Our commitment to following Jesus and making disciples never ends. It's our calling and it's our mission. Well, the good news about our mission this morning is we have help. What is our help for the mission? Here's the phenomenal part. We have help to carry out the mission we've been called to. We have an awesome helper to do the mission. Our help for the mission is the Holy Spirit. Jesus told him in our Acts text, go and wait, don't leave Jerusalem until a promise comes. What was the promise? It was the promise of the Holy Spirit. And then when you receive power, then you go out and then you go, and you are to be my witnesses. So the whole idea that Jesus had for the church and its mission is that he is going to give us incredible power to carry out the mission. And when that power comes in the presence of the Holy Spirit, then we go. We do it because he has told us to do it. Jesus has all authority. In verse 18 of Matthew 28 of our text, it says, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So why are we talking about the mission today? It's because he said to. He has all authority. This is from the word and the heart of Jesus. We do it because he is with us. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Verse 20. Isn't that great? Jesus says in his word, I am with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm on task with you. I'm on mission with you. We do it because of what he's doing in us and through us. Do you know the difference between somebody being with you and somebody being in you? It's this. Let's say you're at the seashore and, and you're having trouble getting out of the water and you're starting to drown. And you look up and there's a lifeguard on the side of the pool or on the seashore. And they're cheering and they're saying, you can do this. You can get out of the water. Is cheering you on? Does that help you? No. What you need is someone to come, get you out of the water, and carry you to safety. And I'll tell you that in the mission that he's given us, he is carrying us. He's working in us and he is working through us. And let me tell you, what they did in that very day. What happened to them in that day? The Holy Spirit turned the fearful 
into the fearless. Do you know what the disciples did after Jesus was raised from the dead? Remember, we talked about this on Easter Sunday a few weeks back. They were hiding from the Jewish authorities. In John chapter 20, we read they were hiding behind locked doors and they were afraid. Then Jesus suddenly appeared in the room. Now you would think that one appearance, they would say, now let's go, let's get it done. But no. Eight days later, they're in the room again and they're locked up. So what was the thing that literally tore the doors wide open and turned the church loose in the world? It's when the Holy Spirit came upon the people. When we read in Acts, there's this incredible thing. The Holy Spirit descends, and there's Peter who once was scared of his own shadow, and the disciples who were locked up behind doors. With the help of the Holy Spirit, they became unashamed and unafraid. And that's the same thing that the Holy Spirit does for us. And I want you to know that the mission that he has given to us, he's given us his spirit. And we do not go as fearful people. We don't have to be afraid. We have full confidence and assurance that we're going to be able to do it because he's with us. The power is in us to accomplish his mission through us. In Philippians 2.13 we read, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. So we as the church must recognize and realize we have a mission and we have the power to do it. In the Rose Parade many, many years ago on New Year's Day, one of the floats ran out of gas. Now that's not the interesting part about this story. Do you know whose float it was? Now this was back a long while ago. It was the float that belonged to the Standard Oil Company. Now obviously they made gasoline, but they ran out. And you know, sometimes that is what happens to the church. It starts to run out of gas. How can that be when we know what the greatest power is? That power that has been given to us, been given to mankind. We have the power, and yet sometimes we run out of gas. There's a pandemic out there. It's a world situation, and that has caused us to stop in certain cases. And it's like all of a sudden we're missing something. We're not missing anything. We have a mission, and it is still there for us, and we have the power to do it because he is doing it in us, and he is doing it through us. And I want you to remember this this morning. Bethlehem was when God said, I am with you. And Calvary means God is for us. And Pentecost means God in us. You see, many people have been to Calvary for pardon, but they haven't tapped into the power that's available for them. And I firmly believe the help is there to accomplish whatever it is that he's called Highfield Baptist Church to carry out. But beyond that, beyond that, the mission is unstoppable. Think about it. He has given us the mission. He has given us the spirit. His presence now living in us, which comes at the moment we repent and by faith receive Christ. He comes into our life when we receive him as Savior and Lord. And so our mission... It can't fail. It's unstoppable. The Roman Empire could not stop the mission of the church. They certainly tried. Do you know what the last word in the book of Acts is? Acts 28, 31. As Paul is ministering in Rome and as he's sharing the gospel and he's preaching from prison. The church was actually growing in Rome and all over the Roman Empire. The last word in Greek is akalutos which means without hindrance. It means freely. It means unstoppable. The Roman Empire couldn't stop it, but even greater than that, the gates of hell can't stop it. Jesus said to Simon Peter in Matthew 16, 18, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Some translations use the word Hades. And it is described as the shadow world of the dead, the unseen, the counterpart of the visible grave. And all the plots and all the plans and all the conspiracies of the enemies of the church will not be able to overtake it. A promise that has been remarkably fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke this to Peter and all the disciples gathering around him. And he said emphatically, have no doubt. 
Do not worry. I am going to build my church. Notice also in that verse, the term shall not prevail against it. That has a future tense to it. Jesus is talking about right now. Nothing, nothing catastrophic, no world event can stop his church from going forward. And I'm excited about that. You might be able to tell that this morning. That gives me great confidence about our mission. And I hope you're excited about it too. We are on an, on an unstoppable mission, which is to lead people to Jesus Christ. The mission is to help people confess Jesus. And this mission is to help grow them up because the mission is about one thing, and it's making disciples for Jesus. You may be watching today, and you've never put your faith in Jesus. And the good news is that you can do that today by calling on his name and putting your trust in him. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And when you call on his name and confess that you're in need of his forgiveness and commit to trust in him, something's going to happen, and that is you become a follower of Jesus. And if you've made that decision for the first time today, we would love to hear from you. It's the most important decision you'll ever make. Because it's the decision that affects all of eternity. And if you're already a follower of Jesus today, maybe you haven't confessed him publicly in baptism, be reminded it's part of the mission. And I'd be remiss this morning if I did not invite you to do everything that you can do to follow Christ or take a stand in obedience to him through being baptized. And then we want you to grow up in him. Get connected so you understand more and more about him. So that you become more like him. What being a disciple, what being a follower of Jesus is all about. There's a great moment in the Old Testament. And we find it in Ezekiel 37 and 38. Where there's a vision that Ezekiel has. God takes him out to a valley that is full of dry bones. It's the valley of dry bones. And he said, I want you to know what I'm going to do with Israel. And he gave Ezekiel his vision that is relevant to us. It's applicable to the church today. God said, look around. And all Ezekiel saw was bones scattered everywhere. It was literally a massive graveyard, like a great war had happened there. And God said to him, you tell those bones to get up and come together, and I will put flesh on them. So Ezekiel does. And they have flesh on them. And the Bible says they were standing there like a great army. But there was a problem. There was no life in them. There was no breath in them. They were not alive because there was no spirit in them. I don't want us to be a great army with no breath. We cannot do this mission without the breath of God working in us and through us. So church, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we need to be committed to the mission. We have a mission, and we are not going to miss it. Well, later on in Ezekiel, we read that a wind began to blow. And the Spirit of God came in, and they stood. They were alive, and they were an exceeding great army. They were beyond great. We are also a great army, and we have a mission. Because we know the one who has given hope. Is there any other word we need today in this world situation that we find ourselves in besides the word hope? We have the message of hope. We know the one who literally opened graves and, and the one who walked out of the grave. And we know the one who gives life eternal and his name is Jesus. Now go and make disciples in the name of Jesus through the power that he has given us for his unstoppable mission. Would you pray with me? Father God, in this moment, if there's anyone watching that needs to trust you, Lord, hear the cry of their heart. Lord, if there are those who need to take a stand to confess you publicly, Lord, hear them right now also. Lord, give them courage and a heart's desire to carry through in a way that boldly proclaims I am a follower of Jesus for the world to see. 
Lord Jesus, we all want to grow. We want to do everything you've commanded us to do. That's our heart's desire. Lord, help us to stay connected as the church, to walk together, to encourage one another, to be the church you've called us to be. So, Lord, we just pray today, breathe on us. Ignite us with a passion that will work to build your kingdom. That even in these times, the name of Jesus will be lifted up higher and higher and higher. That your kingdom will grow in front of our very eyes. Lord, by your word you said that you will build your church. And it's unstoppable. Lord, speak to our hearts today. That we might be refreshed and renewed in the mission. Your mission that you've called us to be a part of, not on our own strength, but by the power of your spirit that lives within us. Lord Jesus, we give you glory this morning, and we lift up your name that is higher than any other name. It's the name above all names. We pray in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Confess your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very soul. Holy Spirit, come and lead us now. We are your 
Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, set our hearts on fire. Lord, use us, your church, your people, your family to make disciples, to, to enable us to carry out the mission that you've called us to. Lord, give us an excitement about that. To proclaim as witnesses those things we know to be true and that give life. So as we depart today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful holiday weekend and join us again next week at the same time, uh, 11 a.m. for our morning service and Pastor Cody will be bringing the message for us. God bless.